Hey you guys, welcome to my series of how do you do? Starting off with how I create my 2D animations. Well, I've got some real interesting questions for my 2D animations like How do you make your 2D animations? What equipment is best for animating? How do I grow as an animator? And in this video, I'm gonna show you my animation process and some little behind the scenes stuff. Hopefully, it's gonna answer those questions and this video is gonna be a little bit more casual than my usual ones. Alright, let's get to it. So, 2D animations. While I mainly do 2D storytime animations, from time to time and especially when I collaborate with fellow content creators, I've explored different type of 2D style animations. Most of my animations are done on Adobe Animate, and as of recently, I began animating on Procreate and Flip a Clip as well because I just love to animate things on the fly. Let's talk about Animate. I'm gonna assume most of you already know the basics of 2D animation, right? Well, what's that? You don't? Okay, my bad. I like to animate on 1920x1080 canvas size. You can basically animate on any size as long as you choose the correct aspect ratio. No square. No TikTok bullshit. Most 2D animations work well at 24 frames per second and that's what I use for my animations. Some of you may think, Wow Wang, isn't higher FPS smoother? Why are you being stingy and settling for less? Are you even an animator? Anyway, the higher the DPS gets, oh I'm sorry, FPS gets, the smoother the animation is. But for my YouTube animations, 24 FPS is fine. After the stage is set, I then import my illustrations that I've completed on Illustrator into Animate. I've mentioned this before that I prefer drawing on the iPad and Procreate and using Adobe Illustrator to vectorize and color them. In this scene, I animated my character dancing in a Minecraft style. The base frames are all hand-drawn, which is about 6 to 7 different poses. I base this off that infamous Borat dance which I found rather funny. In animation, movements can be done with 12 FPS or frames per second called animating on twos which means drawing one out of every two frames. There is also on threes and on fours and this allows the animation to hold position for the extra split second resulting in a more natural movement compared to animating in once where you require more frames per second. Seriously, learning how to animate on 2, 3 and 4s will save you a lot of time. So here's how it looks in quick succession. Ah, neat right? Here's another animation that demonstrates the in-betweening of 2, 3 and 4s. There's a nice mixture of frames from 2s to 4s or even more. It all depends on how much movement and holes you want in between the action. So look closely as I move between twos. Lo and behold, my Pokemon Screwball, which in its final form looks pretty amazing. I animated this for my bestie Azalea 6000 celebration video and I'm so proud of you gal for reaching that milestone and for throwing that screwball. And another technique I like to use in my animation is called... I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I think it was something like boiling or line boil. The effect is something like a wiggling, a boiling effect. Oh, wait, that's why it's called boil? Gosh. Anyway, you take a symbol, for example, this, and you separate it about 15 keyframes. Add a keyframe, and then you part it somewhere in the middle, and add another keyframe. Next up, what I like to do is to go to the shapes, select smoothing and apply it to the keyframe. You can also use the optimized feature, about 50 would do, and let's test the results. You can immediately see the boiling or wiggling effect. Notice how it gives a little more life to a rather still image. This can help you enhance some scenes where your characters don't really move a lot, yet it doesn't seem too static to the viewer. Wow! I think there are better ways to achieve this effect, but it works for me so far, so that's that. And I have a rig for my poses because as a storytime animator, we tend to feature the toon version of ourselves as narrators, and it's really tedious to draw every pose each time I make a new animation. Or you can call it pretty dumb for wasting so much time on all this repetitive stuff. Thankfully, 
My fans have said my character does somewhat resemble me. Right? Whew. I use the Shure MB7 to record most of my audio and dialogues and I must say it's really nice. What do you guys think? Do I sound alright? Let me know in the comments below. I use the Animate Lip Sync feature to um, lip sync and while most of the time it does a pretty good job, sometimes it kinda lags or shows the wrong mouth action, which then I'll have to go manual mode and play back the audio while simulating my dumb mouth movements. On some occasions and especially when I'm animating somewhere outside, people be looking at me and thinking, EW! What's he doing? While I'm moving my lips around like some stupid fish. <sighs> Such is the life of an animator. After completing all the scenes, I then proceed to export the video. I gotta tell you guys to export your animation after the very first take. Why? A lot of animators spend time trying to perfect their animation before exporting and they end up wasting more time trying to fix parts which are not good enough. I know for sure I'm going to revisit some of these scenes again, so I usually export it and drop it into my After Effects to begin the audio mixing. This allows me to roughly gauge how many retakes I need after pairing it with my music. And after all is said and done, it is time for a dry run. So press play and let's say, mm, yeah. If I'm happy with the results, cool. I proceed to add sound effects, subtitles and all the other extra stuff. If for whatever reason that I'm not satisfied with some scenes, uh, I'd go back to animate and um, animate them again. See how that works? I prefer to do my animations in the morning when there's more natural light flowing through the windows. I don't know, it just feels more comfortable. Maybe I have more energy animating in daytime as opposed to night, where I'm mostly depleted of my strength. Also, whenever I'm doing my own VO work, I like to stand in a horse stance, you know? Those kung fu or martial arts stances where they go, hmm, ha! I found that standing like this and doing my VO gives more oomph and adds energy to the audio. GG. And that's basically how I create my 2D storytime animations. I hope this video has helped you gain some insights into the 2D animation process. I've mentioned this before and I'm going to just say it again that I'm not a professional animator by any means, but I do enjoy animating and creating stuff for you guys. That way, every video that I produce lets me level up a little bit, just like Mario. Also, if you guys love what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe so you'll always be able to get updates from me and not miss out on any of my latest animations. I'm pretty thrilled for all the support you guys have shown and those comments that you've been giving, I appreciate let me know if you guys are going to create your own 2D animations and I'll see you in the next one, my bears. Ta-ta!